Hello friends and welcome back. Thanks for joining me on this Wednesday afternoon. I hope you're excited for today's video. I know I am. We are going to be doing something new today. Well, technically it's not really new. It's it's already been out there floating around. I'm just bringing, bringing it back in the light, re, re, reintroducing it to you guys. So we are going to be making a book. A cluster book, to be exact. This idea was invented by Tina at Shabby Dabby Duda. Um, so, yes, I'm super excited to try this out. I kind of stumbled upon it when I'm always browsing on YouTube videos. Um, like last week, I'm like, I love this idea. She like did this uh, like a year ago or something. So I don't know if you guys have seen it or if it's been a while or if this is something totally new to you. So I will make sure to link uh, Tina's YouTube account as well as the video that I found this from uh, down below. So go and check her out. She is amazing. She's a really popular YouTuber, does a lot of creative things. And so I am excited to do one of her inventions and that is a cluster book. And so she made it by using, uh, taking 12 by 12 uh, pieces of scrapbook paper basically it's basically a way of using up um 12 by 12 paper that you have been hoarding for a while and like didn't really know what to do with the pattern it was a little weird and off and so she just was a way of using them up and making a little cluster book now if you guys know what clusters are they're basically just a little a little tiny like thing of just a bunch of the bun jumbles of paper and stickers and other fun little doodads kind of like a way of using up scraps and you make this cute like little little scrapbook cluster that you can use to decorate other things with well this is a good way of keeping your clusters all in one spot it's kind of like a, a look book in a way so I grabbed oh, let's see I got one two three four five six seven pieces of patterned uh uh, scrapbook paper and then I've got just a solid piece of black cardstock. This is thicker than this stuff So this is gonna be my um my cover And so it was just it's just a matter of folding all your paper in half and then just making a little book It is it's so so easy and I, I just loved How she did it Now she um Let's see. What did she do? I think she uh, sewed like like down the middle. What she did is she took it to the sewing machine and sewed down the middle. Um, I am not doing that uh, because my sewing machine, she is up there in age and uh, I do not want to ruin her. So I will not be doing any sewing. I'm just going to hand stitch it with some <clears throat> needle and embroidery floss just like you would any regular signature. And so I'm just going to go ahead and just fold these in half. Fold all of my pieces in half. I kind of, if you kind of notice the color scheme I got going on here, I'm kind of going for like a dark vintage kind of look here. I think these colors really look gorgeous together. So that's kind of what I, kind of what I went for. So it has been cloudy all morning, you guys, and the sun is just now starting to come out. I'm so uh, excited, so I'm kind of hoping that I can get out there and lay in the sun after I make this video. Super excited about that. Just, you know, relax in the sun, get a few rays, get a little bit of color. Maybe fall asleep, take a little nap. I will be wearing sunscreen, I promise. All right, I have all of my papers folded in half. And now it's just a matter of sticking them all inside each other. Let's see, which one do I want to... I guess it doesn't matter in which order I do these in because how this works is once you, you make your clusters on your pages like this, and then when you're ready, you can just, you know, you just tear them out. You just tear them out. It's so, it's so easy. It keeps them all together and nice. So I guess it really doesn't matter how I put these together. So let's just go ahead and start... Stick them inside each other, just like this, to make. Basically, we're like making a giant signature, in a way. All together, just like this. All right, get those all together like so, and then you put it in to the cover. 
like this. All right, and then now I just gotta stitch it together and I'm just gonna go ahead and just do the basic like signature stitching. Let's see, do I wanna do three holes or four? Since this is 12 by 12, I'm gonna go with four holes. So there's one, and I'm eyeballing this. I'm full on eyeballing this, you guys. I'm not measuring or doing nothing because this is basically like a tear out book. It's a tear out book. You're gonna be making stuff in here to rip and tear out so it doesn't matter where your holes are gonna be at. It doesn't matter. At least it doesn't matter to me. You can totally do it however you want. And I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch this together. Now, Tina did, she did use the sewing machine, but I'm not using the sewing machine. Plus, this way goes just as fast. Let's get a little extra here. Back down through. This one, oops, sorry guys, I didn't mean to bump you. I am limited on space here. Yeah. Go back up into this one. Go. I'm just using a scrap piece of a embroidery floss here. And then it's just a matter of tying my strings at the top here. Let's see, so, so simple, so quick. So easy, and you can use whatever kind of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper you want. If you want to make a smaller one, you can use smaller scrapbook paper. She went for like the 12 by 12 because she said she had a bunch of um scrapbook paper and 12 by 12 that she, you know, she wasn't using. She was kind of just hoarding. And so, again, this was her, her way and her excuse to use up some 12 by 12 scrapbook paper. Let me make sure that knot's good and tight. And look at that, I have me a cluster book. Now it is all ready for me to just open up and to start gluing my stuff onto these colored pages here to make my clusters. Let's see, I had seven, seven of these inner pages. I also will put stuff on the, uh, the, the cover as well. Like I'll probably put it on the, uh, on the inside here so I can rip those out as well. I'm gonna utilize everything in here, but nothing's going to waste. But that is seven pages, which gets you 14. Yeah, you get 14 sides to work with. So you got this side and you got this side. So that's 14, 14 pages to work on. Wow. Okay. I'm excited. This is an absolutely awesome idea. It's so super easy to put together. You know, and we did that super quick too. So let's go ahead and start making some clusters in here. Making clusters is a great way to kind of, you know, work through your scraps and other stuff. Though I am I am <clears throat> ashamed to say that I do not have a lot of scraps. Um, this is it. This is the uh, extent of my scrap stash because I, I don't know if you are aware, I am still fairly new to like um, this junk journaling kind of style and so I don't have a lot of scraps to uh work with I don't because I haven't been doing this long so I haven't made many scraps so yeah I've got very few scraps to play with here very few so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to actually use some non-scraps I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use my um my mystery junk journal box this has got stuff in it. It's got paper and stickers and other fun stuff that we can use. I can always, basically, you go through and you kind of start by one layer at a time. So you start by, with your base layer. You stick one piece down, you kind of start with your base layer, and then you'd add something else on top of that, and then another thing, and then you could go in with like, like buttons or lace or little gemstones or glitter. So it's, it's like a layering process also. And everybody does it differently. Everybody does it different. So I need to start with a layer. And you can make them as big or as small as you want. I'm gonna try and make it to where I can get, I wanna say eight on every page. So two across and about four down, eight on every page. So let's see, what is that? Eight times 14. 
Can you guys do some math for me? I am terrible at math, you guys. I failed math in high school, all right? All right? There, I said it. I admit it. I failed math in high school. I think I was a C average. Me and numbers don't get along. We don't. <laughs> numbers hate me. I was actually kind of dyslexic with numbers. Like my mom, like I would see numbers backwards. So for example, you might have the number mm, 63, okay? The number is 63. It's written out. I can see it as 63. I know it is 63, but I still might say 36. I will say it backwards. I will still say it backwards. I'm just like my mom. She did that too. So a lot of my math mistakes are all because I just, I saw them backwards. I did them backwards. It's like I wasn't intentional. It's like I wasn't trying to do that. That's just how, for some reason, how my, how my brain functioned. So yeah, math was not good for me. It was not my friend. It hated me. I kind of have this, this vellum paper here. And I really, I really like that. I kind of wouldn't mind putting that on there. So it kind of comes through. It's kind of see-through in the back. I kind of like that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick a piece on there. And so, yeah, once you got your little book here ready to go, it's just a matter of, you know, pulling it out and then you're just gluing stuff into it. It's, it's that easy. It's that easy. You're basically making a book filled with um, other, uh, like, ephemera stuff. Stuff to work with and play with. You're making your own embellishments. It's, it's a book of embellishments. It is a fun book of embellishments. Okay. Let's see. I feel like it needs a cute little sticker. It needs a little sticker. So I'm just going to pull out my little box here full of stuff. Oh, see, like a person. <gasps> oh, she's really pretty. Oh, I like her. She'd be really cute right there. And then I might add like an interesting, like a button, a really cool, big, black, bold button. That's kind of the vision I got right now. Now you can totally do this differently. What you can do is do like all your single base layer first and then go over with a second layer and then add like your decor and stuff. Me, I'm kind of just working with one at a time. I, I need to just work at one at a time. I can't do, go ahead and do a bunch because I want to make them all very different. I don't want to make some of them. I don't want to make too many so similar. I want them all very, very different. This vellum doesn't like to stay stuck down. Okay, it needs a button. I have buttons. Just hang on. They're in the other room. Where are my black buttons? So I inherited my great grandmother's button collection. So I have a crap ton of buttons, a lot, lots of vintage ones. And my, my great grandmother grew up through the depression. So she saved everything. So when a piece of clothing was like, you know, out of, you know, not being usable anymore, she would cut the buttons off of it and save it. So I've got a lot of buttons that came from lots of different coats and garments and everywhere. Absolutely. Everywhere. I have lots of gorgeous vintage buttons. So this needs a nice, cool, big black button like that. Isn't that cool? I kind of like that. Do I want it there or should I put it up here where I could put a word or a saying down there? I kind of like it just right there. Do I want that one though? It's almost almost too big, maybe. What else do I have in here? Oh. Let's see. I've got so many. Oh, oh, this one's cool. This one's cool. Do I want that one instead? Ooh, okay. We've got a contender. We got a contender. Oh, this one's cute. It's kind of little bit of marbly. No. I don't those ones. Do I have any more? So we're just gonna keep looking, digging down. Gotta gotta dig down deep. <laughs> Again, there's so many buttons in here. I think I have more black buttons somewhere. I just don't know where I put them. So we're just working with what I could grab rather quickly. 
Here's this, this one. What is this one? Oh, it's like a little, it's like a little flowery one. Do I want that one? Or do I want to go with the ones that have like the black and white in it? I'm really leaning towards that one. The only thing is it's a very, it's a real big one. So it's very, I wouldn't mind going for something that's a bit like smaller, more flat. This one's a very, this one's a chunky one. So I'm on the fence about this one. But I'm not seeing anything else that I like. Hmm, what's this one? Hmm. No, I'm still, I'm, I'm still liking this one. Nothing else has caught my eye yet. Oh, here's another one. Actually, it's slightly smaller. Ooh, okay, maybe that one might look better. It's just slightly smaller. I like that one. I think that's the one we're gonna go with. We're gonna go with that one. Okay, I'm going to use the Fabri-Tac glue to make sure that this thing sticks because she she a big she a big chonker button. She a big chonker button. All right. I want her right there. All right. I'm going to press her down to make sure she's on there. Good. All right. And I'm kind of thinking I want like a word or something, something in black right here. I really like in this cluster. This is looking really good. I can always add more to it or keep it simple and basic. Clusters can be as big and, you know, as crazy as you want, which is awesome about clusters, or they can just be the simplest little piece of paper. Just simple, simple little, couple, couple little layers, plain and simple. Voila. Oh, where did I, hang on. I want some words. Uh -huh. Here we go. I got these ones in black because they're nice and small. They're small, so you need small ones for clusters. Okay, she's looking very like um, glitz and glam and elegant. So what do we have that's kind of glitzy glam? Hmm. I like this one here, Live Fearlessly. That's a good one. Let's see. Hmm. All right, Cherish Moments is a good one. Trust the process, that is a good one. We got some, I think these ones are the double, I gotta skip to this one. Let's see what we've got in here. We got Love, Inspired, Delighted. Trust, I got more Trust the Process, Seek Adventure. I think a lot of these are basically all the same, just slightly different print. Let me see, what do we have? Is there any more on this one? Practice gratitude, it's a good one. I like this one, persist with grace. That is a good one. And then there's also this one, choose optimism. Oh darn, this is hard. Some of these are really good. I'm gonna go with the uh, choose optimism. I like that one. I think it'll go good. I'll go ahead and carefully peel off my little sticker. Choose Optimus, and we're gonna stick it right there. There she is. All right, we have one cluster done in my new cluster book. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love this idea. Oh. You guys, Tina has some amazing ideas. So please go check out her channel. It is called Shabby Dabby Duda. I absolutely love that name. It's such so much fun to say. But yeah, and it was also so quick and easy. So much fun to make. You can make as many as you want with as many papers. You can make them big or small or however you want. You can make them however you want. Look at that. All right. And so... A new book has begun. A new book is born. 
allow me to introduce my cluster book. We have christened it with our first cluster in there, which I think looks really good. And so when I'm ready to use a cluster like this, then I basically will, I probably will cut this way and then I'll just, I'll just rip it out. You just, you can either cut it out or you can go ahead and rip around the edges and rip it out. Yeah, however you want. All right. Well, again, I will have Tina's channel linked down below along with a video where she uh, invented this so that you can check it out for yourselves if you want. I am forever grateful for all the other YouTubers that come up with amazing ideas to share with everybody and then for us to reshare with other people who may have not seen it. So, yeah. I love crafting. I love making new things, trying new stuff. So I'm always I'm always on YouTube. I'm always watching so many other videos. It's just, it's an addiction. <laughs> All right, guys. I will see you in the next video. Keep on gluing everybody.